Bob Lumpkin and Friends, starring your host, the Reverend Johnny Blumpkin. You like that? You like that? Hey kids, I'm the Reverend Johnny Blumpkin, and with me here today is my friend, Neil. Welcome back. And due to the holiday, I wanted to talk all things Thanksgiving. Uh, you may have noticed with the What Do We Call It podcast that I recently did a Halloween-themed episode. So I figured I would alternate and switch because lately we've been piss-pounding people's work careers and stuff like that. So we're going to talk a holiday theme. And this theme is Thanksgiving. <laughs> Thanksgiving, what a wonderful holiday. We commemorate the day when the pilgrims and the Indians got together and ate dinner to celebrate how the white people came from Europe and stole the fucking land away from the Indians. And also to give them blankets. Uh, personally, what I like about Thanksgiving, food-wise, uh, I go dark meat. Yeah, I like dark meat better. Because, well, giggity. Uh, <laughs> it's greasier and it slides right down your throat. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Uh, stuffing. And the gravy is always better when it comes out of the dark meat. Oh, for God's sake. Boy, you sure are hell-bent <laughs> on making that very gay. I mean, you just shove it down your throat as hard as you can and then... I typically chew the meat. I don't just <laughs> cram the dark meat down my throat. But you do swallow. Okay, just making sure it's as, as gay as possible. After X amount of Thanksgivings, you pretty much have to swallow your dark meat. You don't want to squeeze any more gay... Is there more of the dark meat? Is it? <laughs> is there more dark meat? I don't know. Turkey? What am I, an ornithologist? I don't know. I just know that as far as the white meat goes, you got to gravy the shit out of it because it's all fucking dry. And then my mom is all like, save some of the dark meat for your dad. And I'm like, fuck you. You're the one that's making me eat this goddamn bird that's going to make me take a nap. And you don't base the son of a bitch worth of shit. So, yeah, I'm eating all the greasy goddamn dark meat. So give uh, Raji the drumstick like he always does. And he eats like he's, you know, about to get fucking executed. Dr my dad will gorge himself like it's nobody's business. Well, the, tr the drumsticks are the dark meat as well. Yeah. But there's a lot of bones. I mean, you got to pick around them. Yeah, I just grab the bits without bones. Yeah. Other than that, that's it. Turkey and stuffing. I don't uh, want their green bean casserole. Mashed potatoes? I don't give a shit about mashed potatoes. I don't give a fuck about yams or what sweet ham? potatoes. Do you I, ever have ham? No. Oh. We no. sometimes, well, because we have a giant family, so we always have a tur one turkey and one ham. Well, it's only so. just the three of us, plus ah. the girls, and the juice doesn't eat anything. Ah. And Chi-Chi will eat whatever the fuck they won't even eat her. mashed potatoes? Chi-Chi will. Okay. Juice won't eat shit. Because little kids like, usually love mashed potatoes. Yeah, well, this is my kid, and she's finicky to the point where I want to slap her. Ah. Yeah. Uh, cranberries, you can fuck right off with that. It yeah. just doesn't fit my palate with that yeah. meal. The canned cranberries are just, I mean, that just makes me feel like there's not wanting to ever eat cranberries when they have the canned it cranberry. Comes up in the jelly can yeah. form. <laughs> yeah. And then you just slice it like my dad does. Oh, that's disgusting. Um,. There's food all over the table, and you can make several trips to get the food in your mouth, right? Yeah. You can keep refilling your plate. My dad apparently does not feel that way, where he puts everything he's possibly yeah. going to eat on the plate the first time as if we're going to give the rest of the food to a football team that's prepping for a yeah. large game the next day. No, Roger, you, you can refill your plate again. He's got all these different things mixing together. Uh, but people do that at the buffet, too. And like the Las yeah. Vegas buffet when we went there, it's like, dude, you get a new plate every time. You don't have to just stack it and mix everything together. Well, you get your cranberry and your gravy and your stuff. Everything's all mixed. And then some people are like, it's going in the same plate. Yeah, but it doesn't taste the same. Uh, when I was a kid, we would always go to my grandma and grandpa's up in Duluth. And I distinctly remember that my grandpa always got the drumstick and that I would watch the Macy's Day Parade in the morning. Yeah. And that that would be about it. That's really all there was to do up there. Then we go visit my dad's side, and uh, there's nothing going on there. Yeah, but as a kid though, you looked forward to it because usually you got, you know, at least Wednesday, or at least uh, Thursday, Friday after school. Sometimes I didn't. I mean, at least you get you know half a week as your kid in school. So yeah, yeah. Other fun things about Thanksgiving: drawing hand turkeys. Yeah. If you don't know what a hand turkey is, go fuck yourself. <laughs> All right. You put your hand on a piece of paper, you trace your hand, and then your four fingers are the feathers, 
and then your thumb is the head, and then you put a beak and some eyes on and draw the little gizzard and hand turkeys. I still draw them sometimes. Distinctly one time on the back of an exam in college, I got bored waiting for everybody else to be done. The teacher's like, what, what, what are you doing? I'm like, I'm drawing a hand turkey. I'm like, look at everybody else. I've been done for 10 minutes. She thought uh, it was very nice. She might have thought it was a little retarded, but she at least humored me. And, of course, besides football, there is the guarantee of my mom yelling at my dad. Uh, a lot. If uh, I make it sound like she has a lot of emotional abuse to dish out during the regular days of the year, Thanksgiving <laughs> and Christmas when uh, he's prepping special meals are the worst. I mean, it's a good thing your dad doesn't drink. Maybe it's not. Maybe he should drink. Maybe <laughs> I have a feeling he'd be a raging alcoholic. Yeah, maybe he'd fucking finally punch her in the mouth and she'd shut the hell up. Imagine that. Son of a bitch. I don't know. I mean... It's bad enough that he's slaving away making the fucking pumpkin pies every year. But he's in charge of the bird and the stuffing. And she's like, well, are you doing this? Are you doing that? She's not really doing anything except for bitching at him about how he's doing everything. God damn you! Uh, he's in charge of all of that shit. He's, your dad's probably the most patient man I, I know. Yeah, he's like a fucking monk. <laughs> how he hasn't snapped, I, I don't fucking know. Ah. Uh. Four years ago, I think it was, uh, I was mad at my mom and we weren't speaking. And I forget what it was she did that pissed me off so bad that I said, screw you, I'm not coming to Thanksgiving. It's not fucking happening. And as the days got closer, I, it's like they thought I was bluffing. I wasn't talking to my parents. I wasn't going over there, nothing. And the beast is like, you're not really going to not go to Thanksgiving. I'm like, God damn right, I'm not going to go to Thanksgiving. Fuck that shit. So Thanksgiving rolls around. And the beast takes the juice over to my parents' house, and, uh, yeah, they had Thanksgiving without me. <laughs> I stayed home. I slept in. It was fucking great. I got up. I watched the Packer game. I uh, I went for a bike ride that was super awesome because it was almost 60 degrees that day. Yeah, it was, it was a great time, and I'm really glad that I did it because even though in the long run it didn't change my mom, I had to make a stand for myself. Yeah. But as I mentioned with the pumpkin pies now... Thanksgiving, for me, holds a grand tradition of pumpkin pie. Uh, Graham knows I'm addicted to pumpkin pie. People at work know I'm addicted to pumpkin pie because they have brought me entire pies just for me. Uh, that's, I mean, that's my favorite pie, too. I, I have a problem. This, uh, I, I addressed this yeah. in way back in episode three where there were times when I discovered how cheap pumpkin pie was around Thanksgiving... Especially oh, yeah. the day after Thanksgiving. If they have extras at Cub, I would go there and buy one. And then I would eat half of it in the parking lot. And I'd eat the other half later. But it would never leave my car. Uh, and then I'd hide the empty plastic uh, for the pie under the passenger seat. Uh, until I was going to go gas up. Because I didn't want to throw them away at home. So the bees would yeah. see how many <laughs> pies I'm eating and then make fun of me. I was hiding pie containers the same way that a junkie hides their dirty needles. So nobody knows what's going on. And... The problem was, I knew I shouldn't be eating the pie like that, but I couldn't stop myself. <laughs> it's like fucking an old girlfriend. You know you shouldn't do it, but you do. And it feels good at the moment, but afterwards, there's that sense of shame and regret that comes with it. And uh, and yeah, so I would eat these fucking pies, and i just feel ashamed of myself. It was terrible. Ah. So, uh, yeah, pies. Jesus Christ. One distinct Thanksgiving... And this is where it went from like a normal love affair with pumpkin pie to being uh, something I should be concerned about and that there might need to be an intervention for. It is a few years back, probably five or six, back when it was still Major's Bar in Blaine yep. off 109th and 65. Now it's uh, Wild Bill's. So we went there and somebody said they had pumpkin pie. So I'm like, hmm. I don't drink, but I'm, it was me and Rick James... And his friend, who he calls Will, it's not his actual name. And I'm like, well, round of pie for the boys. Ah. So we had some pie. And then I think I ordered a second piece. And Rick's like, you really, uh, you really liking that pie? I'm like, I, I think I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna get more. Was it like a big piece or? It was decent size, but when I ordered the third piece, it was towards the end of when they ah. were serving. She brought me three quarters of a pie on a fucking plate. Jesus. And charged me for one piece. Well, I think it's a good thing you didn't go to Perkins the other day because we went to Perkins for lunch mm -hmm. on Monday. Free pie day on Perkins. 
Oh. With any entree, and you get a free slice of pie. That's only one. Yeah, but... That's a tease. Well, that's, I think, the thing, is they're trying to get you to buy the whole ah, pie. See, the first one's always free. Yeah. Sons of bitches. They're just like a dealer. Gotcha, bitch! So I ate all that pie, and then the next day I stop by Cub for whatever reason. I get in the front door, and there's an entire table of, like, <laughs> ten leftover pumpkin pies for a buck fifty. I'm like, wow. <gasps> This whole pie for a dollar fifty. <laughs> awesome. So I did, and I ate it all ah. in under twenty four hours. Whipped cream or no whipped cream? No whipped cream. Okay. I don't. Me and dairy, we don't hang. So ah. whipped cream just makes me feel all unsettled and get diarrhea. Okay. Pumpkin pie makes me poo solid logs of orange hatred, but I don't. Ah. I don't want to mess it up with the fucking whipped cream. No, 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 no. So also with that. This year, I'm off sweets. Two days before Halloween, I quit sweets for the rest of the year. Going to see what it does for my weight. No pumpkin pie. Hmm. I did, however, buy a can of pumpkin. Yeah. Which, it doesn't have all the shortening and all the other shit that comes with the pie. Pumpkin by itself is really healthy. Well, you know, I because I've been doing that Atkins for a long time, pumpkin is actually pretty low carb, all things considered. Yeah. They actually have lots of recipes for making low carb pumpkin pies because... It's. I mean, it's not. Doesn't taste the same because you're not putting all the sugar. But you can use like Splenda or, you know, whatever the STV or whatever it is. St- I don't know what the hell it's called. I believe it's called powdered cancer. Yeah, you're gonna get cancer from the fucking sun, probably. So you might as well get it from eating something that tastes good. But they have pumpkin pie spice that you can buy, yep. and you just put that on there, and it tastes like the pie without all the fucking shitty stuff. Yeah, that too. So point to me but i did it once i'm like i I, I don't know i'm not even enjoying this Ah. something has snapped in me there was an entire pan of brownies at my parents house the other day i popped the lid and i took a big whiff i'm like you you dirty disgusting delicious chocolate fuck yourself and i put the lid back in i haven't had any sweets in weeks so yeah uh, no pie this year so all the times that me and graham have referenced and that character is called the uh the easily entertained retarded guy who gets overly excited and poops himself. It's a, it's kind of a mouthful. It's more along the lines of like a late night with Conan O'Brien type character that's got way too long of a name. But ah. just about every bit that I would do at some point, would, he'd be pooping himself. So he'd get really excited to go to Grandma's and watch the Macy's Day Parade and see SpongeBob. Yeah. And then he'd eat too much pumpkin pie and he'd poop himself. Okay. So pumpkin pie poop is like an ongoing joke with me and Graham of it radio. Mecca like a high, mecca. Fuck, fuck, fuck! But, you know, so this year no pumpkin pies and no pumpkin pie poops. Yeah. I mean, I like pumpkin pie, but I'm, I was never, I don't understand the whole pumpkin spiced everything. Like, like lattes and all that. Everything, yeah. Like they started spicing everything pumpkin. Pumpkin spiced Cheerios. Yeah. Pumpkin spiced pancakes. Nobody's doing like a pumpkin spice douche. Mass and Gill should do that. Mountain Dew orange. Oh, well, I guess they have co- oh, the orange. It would be Mountain Dew dark orange. Mountain Dew brown. Yeah, if you're drinking Mountain Dew brown, I think you got even bigger <laughs> problems of what's going on there. I believe that's called you added bourbon. Yeah. Which Rick James will do. He'll drink Beam and Dew. Yeah. And it sounds gross, but he, he loves it. Ricky! He is kind of a big drinker, though, so. Now, because I work at a jail, I just want to point this out, that we do have Thanksgiving at the jail. Okay. They have a traditional Thanksgiving meal, but they have it for lunch, and it consists of some stuffing, some mashed potatoes and gravy, some cranberry, a pumpkin bar, and a slice of turkey log. E. A log of meat. Like the... It's literally a fucking log that they slice. So it looks like a giant thing of summer sausage, but it's... Turkey. Yeah, but they slice it at the kitchen because they can't have utensils there. They yeah. can't have knives and shit. So it comes sliced. So they're just putting a slice on each tray. Ah. I, it's not bad. Yeah. I don't know what's in that sliced turkey log, but it's fucking delicious. It might be just turkey ground up. Well, it's it's something. But um, instead of having a Thanksgiving dinner, they have the lunch. So for dinner, yeah, they get a bologna and cheese bag lunch. Ah. Kind of not great. Yeah. But that's what you get for being in jail, penis. Oh. You're listening to Blumpkin and Friends. Thanksgiving with the Beast. I don't miss those days. Uh, 
I don't have to do any family Thanksgivings. I mean, you're married, so you do family Thanksgivings, and we'll let you get into that very shortly. But Thanksgiving with the Beast is stress now because of the joint custody situation. And they spend half the day with me and half the day with her. And typically I get the first half of the day. Yeah. So like 4 o'clock, uh, I got to hand them over. Today, for instance, she calls me. Um, can it be like 3.30 tomorrow? Can you bring... I'm like, I just went, no. Yeah. W- well, I'm like, no. Uh, you said 4, it'll be 4 o'clock. Okay, well, if you could have them like a little bit earlier, I have people come. I'm like, yeah, we'll see. Because, yeah, I mean, I'm, I, I want to have dinner like right at... Four. Yeah, we'll see. Yeah. Which means I'm not fucking showing up before 4 o'clock. Yeah. Fuck you. You know, there, I have one good Thanksgiving memory of when we were together... It was when the juice was one years old. I don't know what the hell we did the year that right after she was born, because she's October birthday. But when she was one, we're over at her parents' old apartment with her brother and his former girlfriend of like years, right? So here's her dad, and her dad was from Palestine. So he kind of talked a little bit like this sometimes. Okay. And for some reason, when we're having the Thanksgiving dinner, he smothered his food in horseradish sauce. Which is uh, is disgusting to me, yeah. and it's super hot. Yeah. Okay. So he's eating, and I notice that he is sweating mm. profusely from the brow line. I'm like, you uh, get a little bit extra heat there in the food there, Sam? Yeah. Huh? What's going on? He's like, oh, it's so hot. God, I get a, I pet my head. I did. My nose is burning. Oh, I don't know how people do cocaine. <laughs> what? <laughs> He's like, I don't know how people do cocaine. I don't know where he pulled that out of. Yeah. Because it wasn't like we were having this dinner in 1988. Yeah. And then that was the first time that we gave the juice pie. Mm. Like, here's the beast mom giving the juice a little sample of pie. And she tastes some banana cream pie. She's like, smacking her lips. Here comes a second bite. She's like, (laughs) (laughs) she's like lunging, (laughs) lunging at the fucking spoon. That was back when she actually ate food. Would try. I don't know what the hell happened after that, but that's the one good memory. Mm. Just just sitting around laughing at her dad making a cocaine joke, and then after dinner we had to make sure that he took his insulin because he was extremely diabetic. Ah. I I, I just want to add this. So because he's diabetic, and there are always pop tarts around, and I never really noticed it. So one day I got sick of wondering why there were pop tarts around, and. I asked the beast. I'm like, why are there pop tarts? He's like, well, it's for my dad because of his diabetes. What, what? What do you mean? Well, if his sugar's low, he eats he eats a packet of pop tarts, and that brings him back up. And I just thought to myself, I pictured the old man sitting in the chair, and he's just like, oh, bring me. Uh, I need my pop tarts. My sugar is low. My diabetes. Oh, I need my pop tarts. <laughs> Uh, the Beast did not find the humor in it. I thought it was hilarious because I just pictured him. You know, at one point he's like, oh, I don't know how to, how people do cocaine. And in another breath, he'd, I need my Pop-Tarts. I need the frosted strawberry because, oh, my sugar is so low. I'm going to go into a diabetic shock. I'm going to die in my chair. Oh, no. He also liked to watch Sanford and Son a lot. Okay. I realize that's neither here nor there, but I just thought I'd throw that out. He thought Sanford and Son was fucking hilarious in the year 2000. And 12 and 13. Ah. Yeah. Family dinner is for you now. Uh, well, I don't know when it started, but some years ago, I think, for some reason my parents got nominated to start having Thanksgiving over there. And my, as you know, my family's huge. Yeah. And it's mostly just the one uncle and aunt that have six kids. Jesus. Yeah. They have six kids, which three of them, the one of the oldest girls is getting married in uh january so that would be the third of the oldest girls getting married so you have all their husbands coming over the three that are kind of younger because they kind of skipped a while like they had three kids for some reason they waited a while then they had three more kids so there's kind of a about a 10 year gap in between the youngest and then the the oldest of the next i guess wave but uh, well, I believe that is called trying to save a dead marriage. <laughs> what? So they they got nominated for that, so we put it up, set it up in the garage. They have a heated garage. It's I think that was what triggered it because we didn't have the heated garage before, so we never had Thanksgiving over there. That's and, right. Your dad's got that beastly fucking heater mounted in the corner of yeah. the garage. It's the size of a mini fridge. So they've always then been doing Thanksgiving over there, and then 
Uh, so that's where we're doing it again for at least my family this year, which has always been good. My, I mean, we just just ton of food. My grandma makes this stuffing that's amazing. And is uh, it is it ama- yes. Are you amazed when you put it in your mouth? You pretty yeah. much be like, oh my god, this is incredible. Yeah, every time because I don't eat. It's not like I don't eat. I, it's the one time a year I eat stuffing. Are you sure that it's the taste of the stuffing, or is it the fact that your dad doesn't that a propane heater, or is it hooked into natural gas? No, it's uh, it's hooked to the to the gas the for the house. Line. Yeah. Okay, but you're not ventilating the garage, so maybe you're getting high on gas fumes. No. No? You're nope. sure? It's always been good. But so a couple years ago, we like we were deciding on doing the every other Thanksgiving. And uh, so we went to the aunt's house over in St. Paul. And she told everybody, oh, I'm going to handle all the food. And, uh, you know, don't worry about anything. It was like, do we need to bring anything? This is Thanksgiving. Should we bring stuff? And she's like, no, I got everything handled. And so everybody comes over there. The food of choice, lasagna. And salad. That's all it was. Boy, she handled that. Yeah. So I was like, we're just like, what the hell? This is Thanksgiving. And the, she's always done like really weird food on stuff like that. And I know that the Thanksgiving after that, we tried it again and it was some other weird food. It was just like something, just one course type thing. And then like told everybody, oh, don't bring anything. And I don't remember what it was, but I, I do remember a quote barbecue that we were invited for over there. Mm-hmm. And guess what was actually barbecued? Was it uh, soy burgers? No. I mean, that would have actually been closer to an actual barbecue. It was just like peppers and like some other vegetables, just big so vegetables. shish kebabs? With no meat. It was just, when we didn't even do shish kebabs, she just barbecued them and then chopped them up for everybody to take it. And Sounds was, like she has a legacy of half assery. Yes. Jesus Christ. Come That's... on over, everybody. We're going to have a great meal. You let me do everything. And when yep. you get here, I promise you, you will be giving thanks for the previous year when you got to eat actual food and none of what's going on today because yeah. I don't have time for that shit. Well, we actually stopped. Then we just said, screw it. We're not going doing Thanksgiving with <laughs> your family anymore. And we actually invited um, and then her one sister that lives here and her husband and the kids came over to my parents for Thanksgiving. And that was a good year. And I think that the big family on my side was gone the people that have six kids they were actually out of town so it was fine that year so it was like home alone were they in paris no they go they do every other thanksgiving Uh, then they do christmas like this year they're going to do christmas with the other their other side of the family and but it's i don't know my dad's getting sick of it he's like this is the last year we're having thanksgiving here he's like he's like this the math doesn't add up we have seven people total in our family if you count the boyfriend and the wife and the Mm -hmm. kids He's like, they have, I think, I mean, if you, there's six kids, the two mm-hmm. adults, there's eight, and then three three spouses. So they they roll 11 deep. Yeah. So he's like, the math doesn't add up here. Why why am I doing Thanksgiving? And uh, he's just said, screw it. We're done. This is the last year. Well, that's the James. He's like, fuck this. No, thank you. Did he say it while he was smoking a cigar in the garage? No, he quit cigars a few years back. What the fuck? I don't know so, anything anymore. You listen to the Blunkin and Friends. Uh, you know, one thing that I can say that I started doing once I became a teenager is we started like going out and doing stuff after dinner. Like, I think I've gone to a movie before. I can't remember which one. Hanging out at people's houses. One year, I went to Rick James' parents' house. I had never been there. Hmm. Just to hang out with him? Just to hang out with him. And uh, when I got there... He had told me his dad had cars in the yard. Okay. His dad has a fucking car lot in the yard. There are 36 cars the, in their yard. And how many of them work? I don't know. Not many, if any. And he keeps uh, them for spare parts. So he's a Jeff Foxworthy joke, basically. Pretty much. Okay. But he lives on the Andover-Blaine border. So it's not like he's way out in the boonies and they have a huge plot of land. It is unworking vehicles from one end of the driveway, which is, you know, it curls up about a city block in length. It's just so many fucking cars. You don't know if people are going to crawl up from behind there like in Borderlands and you're going to have a Mad Max and Thunderdome type scenario or what the fuck or if deer are going to come darting out because they live out far enough that there's deer all around. But just about any time that Rick needs a part for a vehicle, he just goes to his parents' house. Weird. Yeah. I'm sure the city loves that. His dad's got a decent job of concealing it. Ah. I I don't know. They probably have relaxed... uh, regulations out there to some extent or they just plumb damn don't know but i remember walking in and 
the house is not very updated, but in the middle of this like old wallpaper and carpet is this giant 70 inch screen fucking TV. Tube TV or the old projection style? Newer style. Yeah. Newer style. The 70 inch, but just sitting there. We're sitting at this kitchen table and the decor of the room made me feel like we were in a goddamn 1970s after school special about people that were left home alone by their parents who had to work all the time. Yeah. And then we found like drugs somewhere <laughs> or we were playing around with stuff under the sink. Like yeah. a couple of kids would be like, ah, uh, screw this, Mr. Yuck stick. I'm drinking this shit. Tonex fucking sounds delicious as I'm burning my esophagus out. Well, just like anybody who has family get-togethers or mishaps around the holidays, it's more than just my mom screaming her fool fucking head off. But but the but does your mom ever partake in Black Friday? No. And you never have? I have. Which year was that? Just for like that TV a few years back? Yeah, I went to Best Buy, but I went at like 11 in the morning. And so it wasn't packed? No. I don't... That whole going out and waiting for shit is ridiculous. The fact that stores are open on Thanksgiving is fucking retarded. And they... Well, they've actually been changing that because they've been getting crap. Yeah, some. They, some stores were opening like 4 and 5 a.m. And, you know, forcing people to come into work for that is ridiculous. And it's it's not considered holiday pay. Cause no. It's the day after Thanksgiving. Yeah, they're cunts about it. If I go out... Because I work third shift, I'd go to Walmart after I get off of work once it's died down. It's like 7 o'clock, 8 o'clock. Yeah. I'll go look and see what they got for like DVD sets for cheap. Yeah. One year I loaded up on Breaking Bad. Another year I loaded up on Justified. This year I might go load up on Longmire if they have it. Yeah, or see what they have that people... Something. I mean, because that kind of stuff, People, the people that are trying to bust through the doors, they're, they're going for big deals like TVs and big electronics and... I mean, they don't care about saving three dollars on a, you know, or five dollars on a set of DVDs, right? Nobody's getting up at five a.m. or four. I guess if they opened at five, you got to get up at what two a.m. to get down there. Well, I can say one year, and I went to Best Buy, and all we ended up buying was I bought a video game. Yeah, and she got a Justin Timberlake CD. Wow, we were there for an hour and a half. <laughs> we just kept looking at everything, going eh. Yeah, uh, uh, I'd, it's not my. I've worked so many fucking Black Fridays thanks to my ten years in retail that I'm Black uh, Fridayed out. There was a year at Menards when they had the, like these little stupid handheld video games. Yep, from like China, they had two buttons. Uh, and for basketball, there was like uh, shoot and rebound. There was no pass button. <laughs> they were terrible. Yeah. And my boss is like, "Well, you take a basket of these and go walk around and try to hit the people waiting in line." So there's a sea of people. With the check lanes backed up, 25 people deep each, yeah. into my department because it was right in the front of the store adjacent to the check lanes. And I'm walking around, and I'm just pissed off and tired, just looking like, mm. <laughs> Video games, anybody? Any handheld video games? I got to the point where I just wanted to scream at these people that showed up that was the reason why I had to work Black yeah. Friday. And I love going in there to stores that I used to work at. On Black Friday, they're like, oh, hey, how are you doing? I'm like, I'm not doing what you're doing anymore. That's fucking awesome. I love yeah. to rub that shit in. Fucking love it. I've never I've never done a Black Friday deal. I've done, I mean, Cyber Monday now that's come around, I have no reason to do Black Friday ever again. Right. You don't ever have to even put on pants. You yeah. can just sit there in your skis from the night before and just, I'm sweaty and I smell like farts, but look at this great deal I just got on an Xbox. I wonder if people are still basically trampling over each other on Black Friday stuff. Now, you see, they've done away with that kind of by spreading out the deals throughout the day. Yeah, on the week. Different deals on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Well, then the, a lot of places have been doing Black Friday week. Yeah. If you've noticed. Target's doing it this week. Yeah. I won't go near that place this week. No. I refuse. I need to go to Costco since we were on vacation. Yeah. I refu- And it's since it's Thanksgiving tomorrow, I refuse to go to Costco before Thanksgiving. It's going to be slammed. I would hate to be anywhere near that goddamn place with all the people loading up on like toilet paper and and paper towels and turkey and random shit for their guests that are coming yeah. over. Yeah. Well, as far as Thanksgiving stories, I have two that are pretty good. Uh, there was a Thanksgiving one year, and it was an extra special amount of yelling at my parents' house. At some point... I don't know what happened. They they set the timer on the turkey. Mm-hmm. The timer went off. And just like any time the timer goes off on the oven, 
I instinctively turned off the oven when I shut off the timer. Okay. This was two and a half hours before it was supposed to be shut off. Ah. So I shut it off, and my dad basted it and put it back in there, and an hour goes by. <laughs> and he goes up there, and he's like, wait a minute, what the hell? So my mom comes down, and she starts screaming about the fucking oven being off. Jesus Christ! Yeah. I mean, screaming her ass off because dinner just got delayed by God knows how much. The best part is, she blamed him for it. Yep. I didn't even think of it at first. Yeah. I'm just sitting there like, what the fuck is going on upstairs? And I hear the screaming, and he's like, I don't know. I don't fucking know what happened, all right? I'm like, what's wrong? Well, your fucking idiot dad turned the goddamn oven off, and now dinner's going to be late. I'm like, oh, shit. Uh, That was me. What do you mean? Well, uh, remember when you told me to turn off the timer for you before you basted it last? Yeah. I bet you I turned the fucking oven off, too. Why would you fucking do that? <laughs> like, what do, what do I do every time the timer goes off on the oven for pizza or meatloaf or anything else? I turn off the timer, and then I turn off the fucking knobs, and I, I guess I was tired and I wasn't paying attention. Well, now dinner's going to be late. Ruin the rest of the day. Like, we still ate. The meal was fine. Nothing else went wrong. Super quiet. You would have thought that I got caught stealing a white baby from a shopping mall, and then they found out about it because it was cooing in a closet. I tried to hide it till the next day. Uh. You're like, well, not great. Now you made us all accessories. We're aiding and abetting a crime. Kidnapping. Which, by the way, if you really want to get in trouble, steal a white baby. See what happens. No, I don't think I'll pass. Okay, well, that's probably a good idea. Uh... There was another year, and this is back in junior high. This is back when I was still friends with Doug. Ah. There was a baking dish of stuffing. Mm -hmm. So I had a few spoonfuls of it. And then I went to Doug's. Well, I started feeling really shitty when I was over at Doug's. We're watching a movie. I don't feel good. And uh, he gave me some ginger ale to try to settle my stomach. Yeah. Yeah, that didn't work. And then we were going to go to the Mall of America for something, too. And it, it, we went down there. We're doing our thing. I just got progressively sicker over the course of the whole day. And we got to the part when we were about to leave the goddamn Mall of America. Yeah. And I I was pale as a ghost from nausea. Like, uh-huh. we went into some store so he could buy a $60 white button-up shirt. Uh-huh. And everybody at the Gap was looking at me like, okay, you're dressed like you don't belong at the Gap. And secondly... You look like you're fucking anemic and you just went through some bloodletting or something. Going back home, and that's when I realized, okay, I'm going to throw up. This is going to happen. Yep. And his dad gets to the train tracks right before my parents' neighborhood. He goes over to like five miles an hour. Mm -hmm. I barely held it in. We get to my parents' house, and I get there. They're like, what's wrong with you? I'm like, I don't know. I'm sick, and I don't fucking feel good. I think I'm going to throw up. So I go up to the bathroom. And I fucking blew chunks into the sink, like, almost Uh. immediately. And it was brown, and there were hunks of white in it. And immediately, my mom chimes in with, were you drinking? You were drinking over at Doug's, weren't you? I'm like, no. No, we weren't. I don't drink. Turns out that the dish of stuffing was not yet baked. Uh. I had consumed raw egg. Uh. Yeah, and then I had gotten a slight form of food poisoning from it. And to this day, no matter how much I have proved to her, and she even remembered, my dad recalled, I ate from the dish. Yeah. He's like, you ate from that stuffing that was on the counter? I'm like, yeah. Well, I didn't cook that yet. Uh. I'm like, he's like, well, the the raw eggs probably made you sick. He says that in front of my mom. We have solved the mystery. And to this day, she still goes, well, that time that you got sick, and you said it was from stuffing, but I swear you were drinking over at Doug's. Like, yeah. I cannot convince Linda of anything, even though there is legitimate, glaring, empirical evidence that I was not drinking, and she still thinks I was drinking. Just because you were sick. Just because I was sick, because she's so fucking retarded. And she'll never even say the words, I'm wrong, when she's wrong. Yeah, well, that my overarching point here is that she doesn't get out of the world and experience anything anymore, and she has zero grasp of, like, social norms. I'm not even exaggerating. She gets up, she sits on the couch, she watches TV. She eats breakfast while watching TV. She comes back downstairs and watches The Price is Right, and then she watches 
The Young and the Restless. Then she watches the 12 o'clock news, partly, and then she goes to Days of Our Lives. And then sometime around 1 o'clock, she waddles her fat ass into the shower to wash the stink off. And then she sits down uh, in the kitchen and eats lunch. And by eats lunch, I mean my dad made a sandwich for her and put it in a Ziploc bag before he went to fucking work. And she eats that. And then she goes back downstairs. You know what she does? If she's not doing laundry, she watches more fucking TV. Because she's got to see Let's Make a Deal. And then she's got to watch Twin Cities Live. And then she's got to watch Ellen. And then the 5 o'clock news, the 5.30 news, the 6 o'clock news. Wheel of Fortune around dinner time. And then they'll watch whatever stupid fucking singing competition show is on either America's Got Talent or The Voice. And they'll ride that wave all the way to the 10 o'clock news. And then eventually she'll get bored around 10, 30, or 11 and go up to bed. Uh, That is every fucking day of her life that does not involve going up to the lake. Which I can't imagine is too much different. Yeah. We don't really see her up and about around there. So for her to just assume that I was drinking because kids get into alcohol sometimes... Like, they had a goddamn liquor cabinet with 50 bottles of random shit sitting there until I was, like, 14 or 15. And one day they just decided to get rid of it all because they were afraid I was going to (laughs) start drinking. Like, they don't drink. They have it from years prior when my mom was running for political office and they'd have fundraisers and people Mm -hmm. would donate bottles of booze to serve because my dad would, like, play bartender to get money to buy campaign literature and signs for her. So, yes, that all of that... All of that was for just because she thought I was drinking. Huh. I can't wait for Thanksgiving dinner tomorrow. Yeah. Well, you know what they say. There's a lot of old people and a lot of fat people, but not a lot of old fat people. Unfortunately, she's 67 and fat. Well, I don't know if that's considered like old, old, until you kind of get into the 75 range. She's physically like 80 years old. Ah. Uh. So she, she's probably got, what, 10 years left? I don't... Don't say that. Don't. <laughs> don't, mate. That's like a prison sentence, for Christ's sake. 10 more years of this <laughs> shit? No. Thank you. Oh, damn, how fucking stupid are you? Well, because it's a special holiday episode, we're going to do something special. Uh, you need to avenge your two horrible losses <laughs> at the RPS challenge. <laughs> You have shit the bed thoroughly. You changed your strategy by second guessing yourself the first time, yep. and then I, I, it, it came down to like a fucking weird tiebreaker the second time, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. I mean, if you need any more proof, look at the RPS Wall of Champions. Whose name uh, do you not see on it? Your own. Yes. You are O and two. So, because uh, you can't just get a straight championship title shot uh, mm-hmm. when you're at the bottom of the standings. That's when you got to play the scrubs. Uh, That's where you come in. Say uh, hi. Hi. Who are you? The Juice. The Juice. For a live RPS challenge. Daddy, I want to say my name. Too. Nobody cares about you, Gigi. Juice. Gigi. Yeah, great. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, Blumpkin and Friends proudly brings to you the Rock, Paper, Scissors Intercontinental Championship Challenge Championship of the World! So... What you do when you're at the bottom of the standing is you start playing the scrubs. You, as a former champion, yep. got your ass handed to you last time you played. Okay. So now you're back down to the bottom. Whoop. So this is a non-title match. Are Wait. you ready? Ready. Ready. You're not even playing. Why are you ready? Because. Hand number one. Scissors. <laughs> <laughs> you don't read them. He goes, and then I tell him what you picked. Oh, you already wrote it down? So you just blew hand (laughs) number one. So you already shouted yours out. So, Neil, what is your first choice? Obviously a rock. Okay, well, a point goes to him. Don't say your fucking hands anymore. Okay. Hand number two. Neil. Rock. Neil goes rock. The juice goes paper. Point for the juice. Yay! Hand number three. Rock. Really? Yep. Y- you doing this? Yep. Okay. She also threw a rock. Tied. That is a tie. So, you are tied at 1-1. One, one. Hand number four. Rock. Jesus Christ, are you fucking serious? Yep. Oh, God, he's going for it. Uh, she threw... What did you throw? Scissors. Are you asking me or telling me? Rock. 
Okay, scissors, point for Neil. So here we go, here we go. Hand number five. I'm gonna throw scissors this time. I know her pattern. You throw a scissors. She threw. Dang it! A rock. <laughs> I thought I had it. I was with you and fucking tie. Breakers. I should have. It would have been a tie. Okay. So now overtime. You jumped. I scared you, didn't I? Yeah. You yeah. scared me. Nobody cares about you right now. Now it's best of three. Now it's best of three, motherfucker. So you better uh, avenge. She's got to do it live, or do you have them written down? No, I have them written down. Okay. All right. Bonus hand number one. Uh, I'm going to go with rock. He is going to go with rock. Rock. You. This rock, is. Rock, paper, I, scissors. Yeah, we 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 know. Thanks. Rock. I won. <laughs> Nobody. Nobody's actually going against you right now, so you didn't win shit. Yeah. Rock, paper, scissors. Suit. Okay, so the juice also <laughs> threw a rock. That's a tie. tie. Uh-oh. Bonus hand number two. Uh, so it's... I'm going to go scissors this time. He is going to go scissors. Rock, paper, scissors. Shut the hell up. Suit. God. Rock, rock, paper, scissors. I just rock. want to point out, what what does that say? What did rock, you throw? Rock, paper, scissors, rock. I won. Paper. Hold on, shut up. What did you throw? Paper. Rock. Paper. What paper. did Neil throw? Scissors. scissors. I got scissors. What does that rock. mean? Paper, scissors. Uh, Daddy, I got Neil scissors. got a point. I got scissors. I won. Uh, Kiki. You're terrible at this. <laughs> Get out of my lap. Hey. Your yeah. winner and first time victor, Neil. Boo. Beating the uh. juice. You. Win. With zero, you know, maybe if you wouldn't have given away your first hand, he wouldn't have gone with the all rock strategy. <laughs> you pretty much fucked yourself on that one. Leave it to my three-year-old to think that she has any involvement in this when I say it's Neil versus the Juice. I don't know why the hell she thought she was going. God, what a what a fucking fiasco! <laughs> and really, the first hand scissors. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> That's the only reason I let her play is because it's usually entertaining for the amount of uh, just complete cluster fuckery involved. If I next time I'm gonna duct tape the three year, I'm gonna I'm gonna belt her into her high chair and give her a goddamn yogurt and say stay here, and then maybe we won't have her going walk paper scissors shoot. Well, you finally beat somebody. Yep, uh, it was a fucking child. So asterisk. Ah. <laughs> And a game that takes so much skill. Right. I know, because I've already written down her answers, because she can't be trusted to not try to change her answers or shout them out at the wrong fucking yeah. time. You can't do it by hand. She's a dirty cheater. She'll change uh, her hand. She waits to, yeah. They both do it. They both watch each other's hands. They're like, go. Go. No, you go. <laughs> go. Yeah. And they'll be like, they'll like this. Uh, they're like slowly lowering yeah. their hand, trying to change it it's almost like the slot machine bonus extra life game in between levels on <laughs> super mario 2 i'm glad she lost fuck her face interact with the show on twitter at blumpkin show that is at blumpkin show you can find us on facebook at facebook.com slash groups slash blumpkin and friends i'm the reverend johnny blumpkin neil good night Thank you for being a friend Travel down the road and back again Your heart is true, you're a pal and a confidant And if you threw a party And yeah, you invited everyone you knew You would see the greatest gift would be from me And the con attached would say Thank you from Blumpkin and Friends What, what, What are you doing? Why are you still here? The episode's over. Shut off the video. Go go do other things. Go play on your phone. Go download some MP3s. 
Go shop for pornography on adamandeve.com. I don't know. There's nothing else. Didn't you get enough? You can't possibly want more holiday dysfunction. You do? All right. Well, uh, this is the story of uh, years ago. I believe I was a senior in high school and I was dating a girl from up north at the lake and she had come down to have Thanksgiving with my family. And I've told this story on the podcast before. We were up in my room watching TV while everybody was downstairs finishing up dinner, getting ready for pie. And and my dad's like, oh, come down for pie. I'm like, yeah, we'll be down in a few minutes. Well, being the suave motherfucker that I thought that I was, I talked her into doing it with my bedroom door wide open, which is slightly askew of when you can see the dining room. The reason I was able to pull this off, though, is because we were cuddling in my bed. Air quotes, cuddling. And she actually had a hole in the crotch of her pants by accident. This is not like anything that I manufactured. So I just, I pulled my junk out through my zipper and um, I started doing her through this hole in the crotch of her pants, which was hilarious. I don't know why. Whenever you're a teenager and you're having sex uh, pretty much out in the open and other people don't know what's going on, you tend to giggle a bit. And at the time, I thought it was fucking hilarious. She was really nervous. And then uh, I finished quick, and then we went downstairs for pie, and then we just sat there with these stupid shitty grins on our face while we ate pie trying to pretend that we didn't just gotten away with having sex. Like, we tried to hide our glee at what should have been shame, but it was not to be. Happy Thanksgiving!